we were discussing um, the abnormal unsuspected electrocardiogram. Uh, situations uh, where a patient would have an EKG because they had a family member who died suddenly, or a patient who has symptoms of passing out, um, and we get an EKG and it's uh, un uh, unexpectedly abnormal. It happens uh, not too, you know, uncommonly. Um, the, the diseases that are on the ECG, uh, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, occurs in one in 500 individuals. Uh, another disease that I showed, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, occurs in one in 2,000 individuals. So it's causes of, of sudden death in young uh, individuals. In some respects, I see patients who had a brother or a sister who unexpectedly died playing soccer, and they come in because they're concerned that what happened to their sibling would happen to them. I've seen uh, other uh, instances where a patient has passing out episodes, their, EKG, uh, their uh, physical exam uh, is unrevealing and they're referred for an EKG and, uh, and, and that's abnormal. I've also seen in patients who want to play sports uh, and they want to participate in competitive athlete, you know, athletics, so football or basketball, and uh, they have a little abnormality on their exam or something on their family history that's a little bit concerning, so they get an, an EKG. The treatment, you know, depends upon the clinical context, uh, and I generally treat patients the same, but how you deal with them depends upon what kind of symptoms, uh, what kind of presentation do they have. Are they uh, asymptomatic, without symptoms? Do they, do they have symptoms? If it's symptoms, are they patients who have had passing out episodes, or some of them have had cardiac arrests, and you, you treat them, you know, obviously different depending upon the situation that, that they present. So there are some diseases uh, that are dynamic on their EKG. So certain diseases, when you have a abnormality in the heart, you know, pathologic abnormality, those ECG abnormalities are kind of fixed. They don't go away with time. They stay with them. In fact, they can progress as the disease progresses. But other ECG problems like long QT or Brugada, some days the patient may have a completely normal EKG or just mildly abnormal EKG and you're still not sure about the diagnosis, but at other times they have a full-blown long QT interval or what we call a type 1 Brugada pattern. So these ECG changes can change. And so one normal EKG does not exclude a diagnosis. You, uh, you often have to do serial EKGs and follow them in time to find out if there is a true underlying uh, problem. So one of the helpful things is whether the family member had a, an autopsy uh, to see if there is some transmissible disease uh, or had an EKG in the past to give a clue as to why they passed out. But if we don't have that information, then we look at an EKG to see whether there's any abnormalities and based upon the EKG, their history, their physical, if it's unrevealing, you know, sometimes we'd uh, look at uh, things that may not be picked up by an, an EKG because the EKG is not 100% sensitive, so uh, an echocardiogram or so. So it, it depends upon how they uh, you know, present. You know, they, a lot of times they may be very emotional when their brother or sister just died. Uh, and, and if you do find an abnormality, they can get pretty tearful because uh, they then may have the uh, problem and it be at risk. Uh, but in those uh, patients, you try to comfort them that there are now therapies that can be done to prevent them from, from dying and that now they've been identified. So at least uh, you know, we can try to prevent them from dying. Um, in other individuals, you find normal, uh, you know, everything is normal, the exam is normal, the ECG, I feel a little bit more reassured, but I tell them that you, know, they, you still need to be followed because things can change. The ECG pattern may not be evident now, but may develop later, and so they still should be followed uh, as they go along in their, uh, in their life. So it depends upon the problem that they have. So let's say they have a problem called WPW. So they have a extra cable that connects the upper and lower chambers of their heart and they're symptomatic uh, from it. They undergo an ablation and if the ablation is successful then they're cured of that and they'll be seen in follow-up just to make sure that they're okay but for the rest of their life they don't necessarily need to you know, come back. Other disorders are not so readily treatable like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy um, or arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. So those require long-term therapy, follow-up, 
uh, counseling, uh, about family members, and so those people you would you know, have in your practice, or as they, if you're a pediatrician, you'd follow, have them refer to an adult you know, uh, practice um, over time. The, the good thing is that they come uh, with the, the mother or the father, and it's uh, not just counseling the patient, but counseling uh, the mother and father as to what's going on, because they're obviously very concerned about what's going on. And so it's a little bit of a different dynamic than a, a, an older person who is a little bit more mature uh, and, um, uh, and you know, could grasp some of the things that you're, you're, you're talking about. You know, young people, they're, they're still a little bit young some, sometimes and uh, may not be able to comprehend things as well.